So now we've shown how to actually sense a switch using uh, a PIC or a USB bit whacker. What we want to do now is see if we can actually do some sensing of something interesting, some sensor. So what we're going to look at is a photoresistor. Now a photoresistor looks like this. This is a standard cadmium sulfide photocell. And it changes the resistance depending on how much light it sees. So let's say we have a photocell. Its, it's diagram uh, looks like a normal resistor with a circle around it and two arrows indicating the light coming in. And we're going to say that the resistance when the light is on is about 10 kilo ohms and the resistance when the light is off is about 1 mega ohm. Well given what we have with our switch here and our input, I'm wondering if we can just stick this photocell directly into the switch and have it be a, a zero, sorry, a one when there's no light and a zero when there is light. Let's find out. Let's first of all do this situation where the photo cell is uh, uh, one mega ohm, in other words, when the lights are off. So we're gonna draw the circuit again. as a voltage divider. And our pick is going to, again, well, you're going to assume it has one mega ohm resistance inside of it. So we want to figure out what the voltage coming in is going to be. Here's VCC. We're going to assume VCC is 5 volts still. Well, what we need to do to measure uh, VN is the ratio of the resistance, uh, the resistors. So we've got to figure out what this all resistance is. Well, because these are two mega ohm resistors in parallel, I'm going to cheat here and just say this is 500 kilo ohms because I know that two resistors of the same size in parallel are just half the, the resistance of each. So uh, I can actually go right to this formula that we had before, and I now know that basically. This is going to equal approximately 5 volts times 10,000 ohms over, uh, excuse me, that's 500,000 ohms over 10,000 ohms plus 500,000 ohms, which is basically 5 volts times 50 over 51, which is approximately equal to 5 volts. Yes. It's going to sense when the when our when um, when the lights are off, the input, in other words, in one, in one when the lights are off, is going to be one. Now, how about when the lights are on? When R on is ten kilo ohm. voltmeter here and I have my pick being about 1 mega ohm. R1 is equal to 10 kilo ohms. And my photocell is going to be also 10 kilo ohms. So what's RT going to be? It's RT of this section again. Well, this time it's a little bit harder to compute, but doing it quickly, 1 over 10,000 plus 1 over 1 million is equal to approximately 9900 ohms. Okay, so now 
we know that Vn is equal to Vcc times Rt over R1 plus Rt. And so that's going to be 5 times 9900 ohms over, let's see here, 10,000 ohms plus 9900 ohms, which is equal to approximately 5 over 2 volts. Well, that's a bit of a problem because the PIC is comparing VN to VCC, which is 5 volts, and to ground and seeing which one's closer, well, we assume, to figure out if this should be a 0 or 1. This is exactly at 2.5 volts. What's it going to do? Well, almost exactly 2.5 volts. Well, that's a little bit too dangerous for me. So how can we fix this? Well, just looking at this equation for a second, if I made R1 bigger, then the voltage at Vn would drop. Let's make it, say, 30,000 kilo ohms. That changes this to be, let's see here, 5 times, basically, 1 over 4, or about 1.25 volts. Well, that's certainly a whole lot closer to zero now. So, certainly 1.5 volts is much closer to zero than, the, than VCC, which is 5. So, obviously, I can just increase, keep on increasing R1 uh, and get this voltage down wherever I want. But, it looks like a great idea. It gives me the zero I want here. So now I'm actually basically saying that, you know, in one, this pin, in one, when the lights are on, it's going to be zero. But if I change R1 to 30, how does that affect my other circuit when it's actually, when the lights are off? Well, going back to the original circuit, if I now put a three in here, and uh, we have, looking at this for a second, let's see here, we end up with three here, and this becomes basically 50 over 53. Well, that's still very close to five volts. So increasing the resistance really did not change much the voltage in when, I'm, when the lights are off. So I can actually play with increasing the resistance here to get something that's a little bit lower than five volts, but much closer to zero volts here. And this is the way you can actually quickly sketch something out with a new sensor. When you know the range the sensor is going to have, you can actually figure out exactly where the set point is so that you get a different value, a different point where it changes from zero to one. What's really interesting about this is that I can, by changing this resistor here, I can make this circuit um, change from zero to one anywhere I want as far as where the light, the amount of light hitting this photoresistor. I just got to calibrate, I just got to look at the photoresistor and see how much uh, resistance it has at whatever light condition I want. I can set the trigger point exactly where I want it. Well, that's pretty exciting. So now we've actually gone from a simple sw uh, sensing a simple switch to sensing a photoresistor. And what we can do with this also is have different sets of resistors set up in the circuit so we can actually figure out when the light hits, say, you know, 100 lumens or 150 lumens or 160 lumens. We have very many different set points that trigger different pins on the microcontroller. And that's beginning to get to this idea of analog to digital conversion, A to D, a D to D converter. We'll talk about that next time.